Considering the unbelievable dumbassness with which they're being handled, Hughes was very, very smart not to load any of the guns he's been passing out. Because he, Park, and Carlson are marching through the rows of anxious survivors, frustrating themselves with correcting their students' assortment of idiocies. Oh, do I sound a little bit harsher than usual? Well, you have to understand that the only thing is that one person's mistake can literally come back and bite the whole group in the ass. So you can understand why I'm a little bit on edge, right? Especially if some asshole can't hold a simple handgun, but can still find the time to pleasure a pump-action shotgun. Park shares my sentiment, because he just whips some sense into them. Normally, the image of grown men hopping single foot as they whimper over their sore knees would make my day. But right now, I'm not in the mood. Because Yomi is still in our room, trying to force some life into his legs. Thankfully, since Trollop's already pretty experienced with a gun, she's volunteered to stay with him and check up on him. It'll be alright, man. Don't worry about it. Jason looks at me reassuringly, sounding about as reassuring as a friend who knows fuck all about medicine. Nevertheless, I give a slight smile. Acknowledging my friend's concern as I irately scuffle over the bolt action Winchester I'm trying to get my head around. Randall looks just as befuddled by his rifle. Man, stupid man. man you can keep fiddling on these bolts forever, shit. How'd you know when to shoot? I thought you knew how to shoot. Yeah, well, um, that was like. Randall hesitates, but a wicked grin flashes across Jason's face. He chortles, smacking Randall on the shoulder. Okay, get this. So, Randall's trying to impress some girl. <laughs> and uh, so he tells her he's an amazing shot. Y you are? <laughs> Please. Okay, so he tells the girl to hold on an apple while she's sitting on a horse. No way. I shake my head at Randall, who was actually trying to attach a bayonet to his rifle by sticking it down the barrel. I mean, come on. Anyone dumb enough to think that I can make that shot that deserves everything they get? Oh my god. And where is this poor girl buried? Nowhere! <laughs> he shot the horse! <laughs> oh god. This oh, he capped it right in the fucking ass! <laughs> Randall never ceases to amaze me. Can't be right yet. Oh my god. Still, considering you were aiming for her head, oh I do think that the situation played out pretty well at that. Jason bursts into a fit of laughter and slumps onto the table in hysterics. Oh, Randall! Randall, tell him! You gotta tell him I can't! Randall frowns, scratching his scalp with a blunt part of his bayonet. I didn't get into no trouble, nothing. Uh, but, man, the girl, like, weren't too happy. No shit! You just gave her horse a lead prostate exam! Man, that nigga, that horse, man, that shit get, went berserk! Get the chick in the face! And the ginger runt is in form. Outstanding. As Jason snorts a fat boogie, I'm unable to bite down a grin. Oh god. Oh, is she at least alright? Oh yeah. Totally fine. Fine? Oh god. She she lost her two front teeth. What the fuck do you mean fine? <laughs> man, I did that chick a favor, man. Her smile weren't exactly why I singled her out. You know what I'm saying? Oh? And why did you single her out? Drunkest girl there. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, Jason. There is nothing wrong with that. Is your romantic? No. Borderline deviant? M maybe. But the main thing is, he knows that a girl needs little or no use of her mental faculties to touch his eruption button. He is a realist. Good job, Randall. Exactly, man. <laughs> what? Randall's trying to piece my jab together. But fuck the mountain. The entire world is gonna run out of oxygen by the time he actually figures out what I just said. Hey guys, what happened to him? Daisuke appears beside us, taking a seat next to the hysterical mess that is Jason. Ugh, never mind. Yo, yo, what's that? I look pointedly at the long fabric coated object Daisuke is placed out in front of him. As he unwraps it, a katana rolls onto the table. Black collar, black handle, black scabbard. Ivory handle braids. Gorgeous, isn't it? Fuck, no arguments there. Looks expensive. Probably is, man. Um, can I see? 
Reynold gapes as he reaches over for it. <coughs> but Daisuke slaps his hand away. Hey, man. See with your eyes. Come on, man. Why'd you hook a brother up? I'll be careful, man. I promise. But you have to remember that I just saw him blatantly pick his nose with the business end of a bayonet, so you can understand why I don't rush to his defense. Suddenly, wild screams explode into the room. Heads snap up and everybody drops what they're doing as we all realize it's coming from inside. Who fucking screamed? Carlton frantically looks around the room, but I'm already halfway out the door. Because I know that voice all too well. You me. I sprint down the corridor, rampaging my way over and through toppled furniture as I make my way towards him. And even though the door is unlocked, I barrel through it. Quick, Theo! Trollop screaming as she holds down my brother. Oh god. Oh my god. I'm standing in the doorway, rooted to the spot by my own dread. But the proof of my doubt lies before me. Spread eagled, eyes rolled back. Even though Trollops pressed herself down on top of me, Yomi is furiously writhing underneath her. Theo, help me hold him down! The door, her harsh tone beckons me back to reality. It's a cold, horrible reality. Trollops screaming at me, but I'm unresponsive. A thick shroud of disbelief has descended upon me. Before I know it, people are pouring into the room. Park and Hughes grab Yomi by the wrists and ankles, cuffing him to the bedpost. Trollops shoves her way past everyone as she runs out the room. But even though he's restrained, Yomi's corpse is screaming unforgivably. He's, 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 he's fucking infected. We need to take care of this. He's restrained. Calm down. Hughes exclaims as Carlson whips out his revolver. Put that thing down. Park tries to calm him, but Carlson's eyes are fixed on Yomi's jerking body. Look at him. Fucking look at him. That kid's dead. If we keep him here, so he's only a liability to the rest of us. We, we need to end this here. He cocks his gun and rests his finger on the trigger. Why are you guys not fucking stopping him? Why the fuck is nobody saying anything? Carlson straightens his aim between my brother's eyes. He's right. Bullet embeds itself into the ceiling as I beat the living hell out of the cocksucker who fired him. Before I know it, Park and Jason are pulling me back from the bewildered, bruised Carlson. Grayson grabs me by the throat and slams me against the wall. Control yourself, boy. Fuck you, if you motherfucker so much as you even look at him wrong. Grumbling and glaring, Carlson climbs up the wall, nursing his cut nose. He looks like he's about to say something. But it's Daisuke's voice that gets my attention. Why are you looking at me like that? D D don't fucking let him do it, man. Don't fucking let him do it. But he wasn't bit. He's, he's not fucking bitty. He can't fucking turn because he's not fucking bit. He, he can't be infected. He, he, he but I've lost my voice. The fact that I'm looking at my brother's manic corpse playing exorcist on the bed isn't really helping. But he wasn't even fucking bad. My friends have nothing to say. No one does. Because it doesn't matter to these people how Yomi got infected. The only thing they care about is saving their own lily white asses. I've got the medicine. Trollop pushes her way into the room. A small person hand. What the fuck are you talking about? Out of her way. Park shoves Carlson out of her way. What do you mean? Yomi isn't turning? Into a rotter? Heavens, no. Child's just having a seizure. She remarks, extracting a small vial from the bag and stabbing it with a syringe. She gestures at Yomi's forearm. Park holds it still as Trollop injects something into his veins. Just a seizure. Trollop sighs, smiling at Yomi's relaxing, stifled, and very much a live body. Just, just a seizure. That's what I'm talking about, motherfucker! Thank God, man. But slowly, oh, as the crowd starts pouring out of the room, Carlson shoves his way towards me, nursing his cut nose with one hand and a smoking revolver with the other. Gritting his teeth, he pockets the napkin and glares at me. <sighs> I'm happy that your brother wasn't infected, but if you ever compromise the safety of this group by disputing me, I will personally- But Daisuke shoves him right back. Piss off. Carlson growls, raising his revolver right up to Daisuke's throat. How would you like a bullet in the fucking brain? But Daisuke icily returns his gaze. He gestures down at his sword. I don't know how or when he did it, but his unsheathed blade is pointing right at Carlson's crotch. Oh yeah? How would you like a sword in your... whatever you... Huh. 
pad for Padman got there. Part lowers Daisuke's katana, glaring at him warningly. That's enough. <clears throat> You'd best be going. Hughes looks at Carlson, and with a hateful glance at the lot of us, the asshole leaves. Yeah, motherfucker! Whew. That was intense. But as she mops sweat off her brow, I realize that this is the woman that actually just saved my fucking brother. I could fucking French her, man. Actually, Nurse Trollope, can I kiss you? Oh, that's very sweet of you, Theo, but I'm out of your league. Huh. <laughs> Story of my life. <laughs> so, um, it's just a seizure, right? Nothing serious? I'm sorry, Theo, but I can't say. I've just administered some Miranda derivative. It's a numbing agent that induces temporary paralysis. She looks at my face as she unties Yomi's restraints. So Yomi's still ill. He's very ill. The seizure is a symptom of a child's affliction, which is out of my hands. Treating Asperger's syndrome? It's like asking for a miracle. Is there anything we can do to wake him up? Afraid not. The anesthesia won't wear off for at least another six hours, and even after that... Shit. Hughes glances at his wristwatch and shuffles nervously. I don't mean to sound callous, but we've scheduled our escape in approximately 18 hours. We can't afford to miss that. What are you saying? If the kid hasn't woken up by then, we can't- You won't need to. He'll be up. He, he will be up. Honestly, I'm saying it more to myself than anyone else. But Hughes seems satisfied that I understand the situation. So he takes his leaf. His part follows him. He glances at Yomi and smiles at me encouragingly. Don't worry. <laughs> Do I look worried? This is Amanda from the band Ava Under Fire, and right here, right now, you're listening to SOB. Wake up, buddy. Come on. Come on. Wake up. The random derivative should have worn off long ago, but he is still out. Still ghostly blue. I've checked his vitals. He's definitely breathing, but why the fuck is he not waking up? Everybody's in the hospital lobby. Locked and loaded. They're all stealing themselves to claw through the hell awaiting them outside. Everybody except for me. Because I am still sitting next to my unconscious brother, still trying to slap him out of this fucking coma, man. I have fucking tried everything, man. Tickling his feet, splashing his face, punching his nuts. Nothing is fucking working. What the, what the fuck do I do? Yeah, it's, it's open. Nice guy enters with a katana slid into his belt and two machetes strapped into his back. <laughs> Looking good, D. Any luck? No. Park told me to tell you that everybody's ready. Yeah, well, I'm not fucking leaving him here if that's what you're saying. Nobody said that. What does he weigh? Like 120, 130 pounds? Maybe we can carry him? No, no, he's not heavy, but there's no way I can get him all the way to the train yard. I'll help. No, no, I, I still can't fend off rotters with him on my back. I'll cover you. I appreciate that, man. But we both know how that would end. <laughs> yeah, um... You're gonna have your hands full with that ginger idiot of yours. I glance at my brother's immobile, white-lipped, pale face and scratch my scalp as if trying to dig myself out of this shit grave I'm dug into. Yo, that's good. It's time, man. Damn it! Oh fuck, this is not happening. This is not fucking happening. Fuck. Guys, I fucking need your help, man. What the fuck do I do? What the fuck am I supposed to be doing right now? Come on. Nice kid grabs my elbow, but I pull it back. I am not leaving him here. I didn't tell you to, but maybe we can buy some time. Another couple of hours. Maybe Yomi will wake up by then. Do you really fucking think that's gonna work? For fuck's sake, Theo. Do you have any other ideas? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Okay, let's go. 
Seconds later, we're in the atrium, pushing our way through the rest of the trembling survivors. Sure, they're armed to the teeth, but let's be honest, man. They're more danger to themselves than anything they aim at. Theo, you're here. Where's your brother? He's still unconscious. That's unfortunate. P Professor Park, please, is there any way you can postpone this push? Please, uh, just a couple more hours, at least until... That's not an option. Carlson's right. We can't jeopardize the whole group's safety over one person. What difference does it make? Whether you go now or in a couple of hours, the number of fucking zombies out there is still the same. He's right. Some of them might even starve to death by then. We don't know that. Every second we waste is less time we have to get out of here. Remember, Bryce has already been blacked out for hours. We don't know how much air we've got left. Exactly. Exactly. We don't know. We could have fucking days worth of air. Conversely, we could have less than an hour's worth. So, so what? You guys are just gonna leave my brother to die on a, on a, on a fucking maybe? Grayson takes the loaded shotgun and his pregnant wife just handed him and stands up. You're not the only one here with people to protect. As I gaze at her swollen belly, I realize he's right. I'm not happy about it, but if I can't convince these people to stay on my account, fair enough, then I'm not going. Your choice. As my troubled friends begin to beg me for an alternative, Hughes looks at me somberly. I'm sorry, Theo. We don't have any options. And with that, the room starts rustling as people start preparing for their break. Guns are reloading. Supplies are being packed up. Yo, wait, wait, wait. Yo, yo, Theo. Yo, why the fuck are they taking the supplies? Oi! I point at the bag slung behind a couple of the survivors. Hey, oi! Oi, why are you guys taking the food with you? We're taking the food? We might need it. But it'll just slow us down. He used motions for them to drop the packs, but Carlson stops him. We might need them. Then what the hell am I supposed to live on? Not my fucking problem, okay? <sighs> Motherfucker. You have no idea because that is the fucking last draw. If this is a fucking free-for-all, okay. I'm game. Before the kid standing next to me can react, I snatch the shotgun out of his hands and stick it right into Carlson's face. What about now? But even though I can see Carlson's fear-stricken eyes down the gun's barrel, I feel about a dozen guns click as they lock onto me. Theo! Hey, cool it. Put your gun down. Or what? You guys are gonna shoot me? I'm gonna starve to death anyway. What the fuck do I care? Right? I feel a slight tingle down my back and Ghost kicks in. Before I know it, there is a guy sprawled onto the ground next to me. Because I think this motherfucker just tried to sneak up and disarm me. But Ghost was a little too quick for him, wasn't he? I adjust Carlson's temple back into my crosshairs and declare, The food stays with me. Also? Huh? A tense moment later, Carlson jerks his head hatefully, but compliantly. Suddenly, Grayson steps forward, white hot. No, it does not. You think I'm going to let you con us? Blackmail us into giving you our supplies? We don't need them. We're not planning on stopping. And what if we get pinned down? We'll starve too. Not before we suffocate. We'll be faster if we leave unnecessary baggage here. Higher success probability. Although Hughes makes sense, my wild-eyed coercion has hammered Grayson's pride. Nostrils a flare, he marches over to the boys with the food and snatches the sacks off their back. His exhale vibrating with rage, he tosses the supplies onto the floor. I'd rather burn the food than let some little shit terrorize his way out of me. Grayson! He snaps, but Grayson's already pulled a lantern off the wall and starts tipping its oil onto the supplies. Grayson, the fuck are you doing? Mother. Control yourself! You wanna play that game? Okay. Kevin, let the boy have the food. He'll die otherwise. Stay out of this, Rachel. Have you people no pride? Right now? No! We're all too busy trying to stay alive, you fuck! Well... Grayson grits his teeth and trains his gun at the oil-drenched supplies. Guess I'm the only one here who won't be bullied and tell. What? Grayson's voice catches in his throat when he sees where my gun is pointed. I don't even think I'm in control right now, man. It's like a primitive tendril of my being has surfaced and taken control, forcing me into holding a pregnant woman hostage. But even though I know how utterly despicable I have become, I don't fight it. Hell, there's even a part of me relieved that I have the balls to do it. 
relaxed and I'm able to do whatever it takes to keep Yomi and me alive. Everybody's shocked. Even Grayson looks utterly speechless. But I've got more than a mouthful. Yeah, your move, Kevin. If you still want to protect those people you were talking about, I suggest you back off. Otherwise, this won't end well. Grayson's eyes burning with hate. His gun snaps on me. You wouldn't dare. I'll shoot you before. I lower my aim to her swollen belly. <laughs> Willing to risk it? What the hell am I doing? You know what the hell I'm doing? What I need to be fucking doing. Because this is what needs to happen. Just let it happen. Utter hatred. I see pure malice in his eyes. But I also see fear. Cursing. Grayson finally lowers his gun. I hope you choke on it. Everybody's staring at me as if I'm some sort of psychopath. But honestly, man, I couldn't give two squirts a piss. I shoulder the gun, scoop up the bags of food and indifferently face the majority of reproachful faces staring at me. The best of luck to you all. And without waiting for a response, I turn around and sulk off back to my room, back to my brother. There's no need for goodbyes. After the shit I pulled, I might as well be dead to them. I shut the door behind me drop into an armchair. I've got food. I've got a gun. I've got big locked doors. All I can do now is wait. Suddenly, someone knocks on the door. Grayson? Clutching the shotgun, I cautiously call out. It's open. <laughs> you're, you're gonna shoot us? Dice kiss sparks opening the door. Park, Jason, and Randall follow him. Thinking about it. Ice cold, man. I thought you were serious. Staring Grayson down like that, man. You ice cold, G motherfucker. Huh. I, uh, he, he convinced me. They think I was playing, huh? With the way Park is looking at me, he knows. But you know what the weird thing is? His gaze isn't judgmental. Rather, understanding. W what are you guys doing here? What do you think we're here for, man? You stormed off without saying goodbye. That's not cool, douche. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, just after how shit went down, I didn't really think the ambience in the room was uh, sentimental. Part chuckles and steps forward and extends a hand. We don't have much time, but I couldn't leave you without saying goodbye. It was my pleasure teaching you, Theo, even though it was just one lesson. I grin, shaken back. Likewise, Professor. Thanks for everything, you know, um, maybe once I get out of Bryce, we can grab a meal together again or something. I look forward to it. But I can see it. He knows that's never gonna happen. Even if I stayed with the pack, my chances of survival were slim to none. <laughs> By holding myself up in here, I might as well have just called the Grim Reaper an asshat and stretched my neck out for his sight. Say lovey. Releasing my hand, Park waves and disappears down the hall. <sighs> what a cliche. Jason tuts, shaking his head. Still, it, it's gonna be fun watching that psychopath whip ass out there. Randall comments as he adjusts the Jolly Roger bandana he stressed across his forehead. The ice kid looks like he's about to say something really hurtful and disparaging, but he holds his tongue. Right now, I guess anything that boosts the kid's confidence is a good thing, right? Oh yeah, definitely. By the way, D, um, when you guys get out of here, um, keep the 50 mil, but can you send the rest of the money to my cousin, Aime? 50 mil? Are you sure? <clears throat> yeah, thanks, you dick. Jason clears his throat indignantly. Then I catch his eye, and he grins, 
Why don't you do it yourself, man? Looks like he's an optimist. But I don't want to act dramatic. So let's just settle with, uh... You know, just, uh... Just in case. I can hear growing noises down the corridor. Hey, uh... It looks like it's time to go, guys. I grab Randall and give the kid a quick squeeze. Alright, it's been fun, you little fucker. Get out there. Yeah, man. Maybe we can meet up in Winston, you know, cruise the chicks and all that shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sounds good. As Randall leaves the room, Daisuke turns to me, worriedly. I know it doesn't look good, but... But if anybody can make it out of this mess, it's you. <sighs> yeah, man. I'll, uh... I'll see you on the other side. Jason grins. And we embrace. Yo, hey, remember, Mr. Baddest Man of the Octagon. Don't you die in here, man. We got a date, remember? I want that rematch. Oh, for fuck's sake. But as I sigh with a hint of a smile, I realize Daisuke is still standing here. <laughs> Shit, this is gonna suck. All right, come on, T. Let's just uh, let's just get this over with, so you can piss off. Let me stick it up my room. Are you sure you don't want me to stay? No, no, I appreciate that, but you've got Randall to look after. So get your kid out of here. And go get your wife. Rip Christopher and patch you a couple of new ones while you're at it for me, huh? And um, the. Say hi to your wife for me, and, um, and, um, and, and can we just please fucking get this over with? But Daisuke shakes his head and makes for the door. Then I me a hug. <clears throat> I'll say goodbye at your farewell party in Winston for when you, Yomi, and your cousin are leaving the octagon. Not now. Not D? Let's talk straight for a second, okay? We both know I'm not getting out of here, right? If anybody can make it out of here, Theo, it's you, okay? Ghost ain't gonna do shit against- Forget Ghost, Theo. The things I've seen you do. The lengths you go to get stuff done. <clears throat> so I'll see you at your party. How you want to end it, Haunty? Fair enough. Never was much for her. goodbyes anyway. Alright, i I'll see you at the party. Save me some apple pie. Pumpkin! You will have pumpkin pie, and you will fucking like it. As my friend walks away, the darkness echoes as I dry my eyes. Because on the other side, I know he's doing the same.